your host Ashwina and joining me today are Mr. Manish Chaudhary from Pitney Bowes, Mr. Shivali Prasad from Map My India and Mr. Sajid Malik from Genesis International. The topic this morning is location analytics and e-commerce. When we chose this theme a few months ago, it seemed topical. It seems even more topical now. Because what is the single most important factor driving business growth today? Consumer accessibility, which is determined by location, both in the physical world and in the digital world. Location intelligence or location analytics plays such an important role in our lives that everything from key marketing decisions to something as simple as where to dine in tonight are dependent on it. And the rise of e-commerce means that location is moving now digitally. You don't even have to go to a store to order coffee, you can do it online. Which is why, as a business organization, you need to realize that consumer behavior and buying patterns are dependent on location preferences. In fact, every aspect of a trade, from consumers to suppliers, from offices to warehouses, has a location attached to it. People today are asking questions like, will I be able to serve my customers better? Will I reach my workplace faster? Will I be able to help my staff reach my customers earlier? And the answer to these questions is exactly what location intelligence aims to provide. With this, I would like to ask my panel, what is their take on location analytics and where do they see the market for it? Manish, let's begin with you. Sure. So I think you, what you said was something very interesting about customer experience. And let's start from customer experience as the key hook uh, for e-commerce and location intelligence. So let me give you examples or different themes. Um, so a price of a commodity is different in different regions, in different geographies. A price of the commodity is also changing based on the tax which is there in by zip code, or pin codes, or regions, right. or countries. Um, at different times of the year, in different locations, the price changes and the need and the supply and demand, all of those changes. If you take all of those things together, you probably have a very, very interesting location overlay on what e-commerce companies needs to do in order to serve or make that customer experience better. Let's take a second theme which is uh, related to shipping and logistics. Yeah. Uh, again, it relates to customer experience and making it, uh, you know, taking the whole friction between the consumer and the e-commerce companies out. And that's where, again, location plays a very important role. How can I serve it faster? How can I improve on shipping cost? How can I improve on delivery uh, timelines? How I can optimize everything which is getting delivered to a particular area and, and kind of pass that shipping cost and the savings back to the consumer. Right. So there's many of these uh, themes. And the last but not the, uh, the least is uh, when it comes to targeting. So uh, most of the companies, let's say what time you get a text message or a, or a notification about a product which is not really suited for you. So how location, the demographic data, the parcel data, the boundary data, all of these things come together and using analytics and data analytics to target the right consumer, the right product at the right time. I think that's what we're seeing in the ad tech uh, so, so let me turn to Shivalik now. What's your take? So, uh, as we as we go forward, um, location is becoming more and more relevant in our life. So if you look at your you know Android phone or Apple phone, uh, almost all the apps that you download ask you you know can we switch on your location, right? So almost every company is trying to determine what location are you transacting from. Whether it's a video game, whether it's uh, online shopping, whether it's a healthcare app, uh, whether it's a fitness app, uh, all of them are trying to get your location. Now the question is, what do you do with the location, right? So you get the latitude, longitude, you try and find out, I live on the seventh floor of so-and-so building in so-and-so locality. Um, then the idea becomes, how do I serve the customer, right? And uh, the idea to serve the customer is, can I, uh, can I ship to him directly? Or the customer is finicky and says, you know what, I want to buy a new shirt, I'm going for a party in the evening, and I, uh, I want a shirt now, right? And uh, I like this shirt on Mintra, and uh, can Mintra help me transact it from the nearby uh, store? And US may not be the best market for this, but if you look at what happens in Korea, or what happens to uh, places in Japan, uh, it's a blend of online, offline models, along with location being a very good joining mode between them, right? So I can be somewhere in Gangnam, in Seoul, I order a product, um, I can, uh, based on how I'm, I'm, I'm walking, how I'm driving, uh, where I live, uh, advertising becomes more relevant based on that. So slowly, 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 uh, you know, what we take for granted, or intuitively we say, okay, if he's living in so-and-so neighborhood, he must be a nice, rich guy, right? That becomes computerized or automated, and the computer takes a decision on that. 
And uh, so this basically you call it location analytics or I call it perception, depth perception or intuitive perception. Um, but it becomes computerized, that's, that's in a nutshell. And you can run queries on it and you can, um, you can build solutions on it and you can better target. The end of the goal is to be able to serve and sell better, right? That's what a business's purpose is. And location is a critical component and it will become more and more critical as, as time goes on. Sajid, how do you view location analytics? Right, so I think, uh, you know, extending forward, uh, uh, what he said is that uh, the interesting, you know, someone said that 80% of all information has got a spatial context to it. Now, whether it's 80% or 70% or 60%, the fact is that the spatial element of all information uh, is crucial in, in uh, various forms of either uh, execution or decision making. So uh, to the degree that uh, we are becoming an increasingly mobile world, and I use the word mobile in the wider context than as a device, uh, the ability to therefore harness uh, spatial technology uh, for you to live more effectively uh, or perform more effectively is becoming um, uh, increasingly prevalent. So if you were to see uh, the uh, the fact that in the last uh, few years, in, in, in the last 10 or 12 years, uh, we have had a situation where PNG devices or nav systems used to be, uh, were a product of uh, GPS and the automobile and the, and, the, and the need for you to drive around. And then you had your smartphone which came in, which has its uh, enabling ecosystem like a accelerometer, a GPS, a, a nice screen connected with the internet. So it brings a new kind of dimension for the usage of uh, uh, spatial technology. So I think, uh, again, uh, uh, you know, taking the example of online to offline, I think that's really a bridge that spatial technologies really uh, uh, help a consumer, uh, therefore, discover a merchant or a merchant to broadcast uh, to a user. Um, so yeah, I think uh, spatial technologies or or uh, mapping or location analytics is now an integral part of the entire mobile stroke internet experience. So. so how does one use and integrate within the existing systems the possibilities of using location technology? Manish, let's begin with you. So I think for <clears throat> at, at, at an abstract level, location data is like any other data. Right. You know, the way you use the data coming from, let's say in our world, we have Commodities, we use machine learning to classify commodities, we have pricing, we have custom, we have duties, we have taxes, mm -hmm. we have location. Yeah. It's just another element. Now, the beauty is, uh, you know, the algorithms and the data sciences layer, which are able to make sense and uh, use that one of the, you know, so location data is one of the legs of the stool, you know, it, if you use it properly, you are able to make your decisions better, you are able to create your outcomes better, mm -hmm. and in turn you are able to serve your clients or improve your efficiency of your operations better. So in, in a lot of ways, you just have to use location as another element in your existing systems. Yeah. I think every, you know, most of the, um, you know, large infrastructures, whether it is data processing tools or BI systems or ETL tools, uh, or big data processing, they've got location in built now. And that's yeah. what you know we provide in, in, in a lot of ways. It also comes as open source. It's about the sophistication of the data and the analytics mm -hmm. which is going to be there. So I hope that helps. Yeah, let's see what Shivalik has to say about that. So I, I'll take a little different view, right? Um, so we are looking, if you look at it from a location or from an existing system point of view, right? It's no, there's no one fits all solution. So if you take a South Korea, which is 10 years ahead of the rest of the world, uh, or you take a London, or you take a New York or a San Francisco, or you take a Delhi or a Bombay, or you will take a Gorakhpur, or you will take a Jharchukuda and Orissa. You know, you can go multiple layers, right? All of them are transacting, all of them are buying. Uh, either they are buying mobile talk time, or they are buying clothes, or they are buying jewelry, or they are buying shoes, um, or they are just trying to uh, buy products from Dabur, for example, right? Um, they all need to be served in a particular way. And how you serve them totally depends on the kind of location that they are transacting from, right? So you will treat a customer in Fifth Avenue in Manhattan very different than the customer who is uh, somewhere in Jharsuguda and Orissa, very different, right? Uh, but it's the same product that may be sold, right? It's the same Levi's that you're trying to target. And the customer in Jharsuguda has the ability to buy, but how you transact with him, how you serve him the ad, how you do the shipment, uh, how you make money on him. Eventually, you have to make money on the process, right? Um, becomes very different. And uh, 
most of the technology companies in the world or most of the e-commerce companies or Airbnb, Make My Trip, Yatra, Sea Trip, Clear Trip, all these companies, right? Um, they are trying to customize the solutions based on this. So a good example, you know, a very, so you said, how do you do it in today's world, right? So if you look at, let's say, Starbucks. Uh, Starbucks has uh, menus in English in US, menus in French in France, menus in Chinese in, in, in China, right? Um, but more or less the brands remain the same, but they do a little bit of customization. Uh, same for, let's say, Domino's in India, right? They have masala pizza and all sorts of pizza, which they don't have anywhere else in the world, right? So they're localized. Now, same thing happens is when you have a normal business trying to transact, um, which is location-aware business. So location-aware business can be a hotel business, right? I am driving from Bombay to Pune. I want to stop and I want to eat food. How do I transact that, right? How do I, you know, where, I, and I want to eat food in a, some, you know, a quality of restaurant which is of a particular kind, right? So how do I find that? So I will use a mapping system. I may use a Map India map or I may use a Google map or I may use something else. But again, the solution has to be location aware contextually and then accordingly figure out the data available in the market and be able to guide me to the place. You know, there are many, many, many use cases. But essentially what works for standard marketing techniques, which has worked in segmentations and all these things, you know, which was manually done or done on Excel or simple computers, a location becomes another element to, to that picture. And, and, and that gets more and more, you know, better segmentation, so better value. Sajid, would you like to add on to that? Yeah, I think uh, from an integration standpoint, I think things are becoming easier. And I, I, I do believe that uh, uh, the ease of integrating all these uh, technologies is increasing uh, by the day. So uh, largely driven by the utility that uh, the technology brings. So, so integration is definitely becoming easier. So Manish, what does the rise of mobile computing mean for location and e-commerce? So the, the most obvious one is uh, once you have a mobile, your location is much more accurate, much more precise. Yeah. It's not uh, triangulated, it is not interpreted, that's one. If you have a mobile and I know the location and the conversation we have, you can customize everything from experience to uh, delivery to where you are, you can tell whether you uh, if you're living on a, in a on a house versus an apartment, I can figure out how many, what's the delivery time, I can figure out what's the dispatch time, if I'm shipping a furniture, I know how many people do I need to send, is it going to be a lift, is it going to be stairs, mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of things which you can actually figure out once you start transacting e-commerce on a mobile. Yeah. It, uh, you know, we all know the X and Y side of things. With the sophistication of our phones these days, you know you can get on the third dimension. Of course. Uh, so it's you know again the applications of transacting on mobile in a commerce world is phenomenal. You know it's uh, you have the power in your hand, um, and a lot of companies I know these days are trying to go mobile first and then integrating back to their uh, power processing power, storage power, the amount of sensors which are coming in these mobile phones which are giving information back. Uh, I think that's transforming the industry. Really. So, if you look at from a mobile computing point of view, I will not say only mobile phones. You take you know, your wearables, your Fitbits that have come out, or you have different different bands, sensors. You have diabetometers, right? If you have diabetes, you can connect it to yourself, and it'll tell you when you need to get the next set of insulin, right? Um, so, a lot of these are devices which are basically making decision making more and more. You know, repetitive decision making becomes easier to do. Uh, there's a whole theory on this called singularity, right? where they say singularity will happen in the next seven years or eight years or things like that, right? So as computing becomes cheaper, or mobile computing has become very cheap, and it'll become cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, you know, nano tubes and all sorts of, you know, every year the mobile phone gets better, or it's easy, it becomes cheaper, right? So mundane decisions which you have to think about becomes easier. So if you, if you really step back and have a look, um, in India, I'm not even going to say, let's say, see the US, right? I used to go ahead and buy a grocery, then you got a phone and you could call the Kirana Dukan and you say, you know, I need so and so sabzi and dal and chawal or whatever, right? And that kind of changed when I said, okay, I have a mobile phone and I'll send you an SMS and you please deliver or a missed call. And then that's now kind of gone to a big bazaar kind of thing where big bazaar actually tracks everything that I eat, right? And I've been using them for, let's say, a year and a half and how many calories we consumed and, and, and they've actually got the whole transaction down from two days to about six hours now. Right? which does not make any sense in a Western world. In India, because we are so urban dense, uh, home deliveries make a lot of sense in a country like India, right? So you have gone 
computational. And now if you take, again, I give the example of Korea, um, you can actually transact on a, on a, on a metro station uh, and you get the whole aisle, you can project the whole aisle of what you want you to buy from a grocery store onto, you the, onto a projection system onto the train, right? And you're sitting out there and, and, you're, and you're projecting this thing on, on, on your floor and you're saying, okay, click, 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 and you have motion sensors which are basically reading your pick, fingers and you're just picking, right? No clicking also. So location came into the picture, mobile came into the picture, and by the time you reach home, most likely the order has already been delivered, right? And there's a whole ecosystem that kicks in. So, you know, if you want to go for a jog, you want to go for a run, you got that extra one hour time in the evening, right? Which, you know, we're trying to do more things every day and, 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 and computational experience becomes better. What's your, what, what's your view, Sajid? I think that uh, the rise of mobile computing is, uh, you know, pretty much uh, uh, a well-known story. And uh, I think we need to also look at the network kind of uh, impact that cheaper phones and therefore enhancing, you know, the amount of uh, mobile devices which are now uh, collecting data, transmitting data, and the network impact of that. I think that itself is going to create a... Uh, a, a new ability to kind of push uh, perishable inventory. I think, you know, one of the kind of uh, holy grails of whatever everyone is trying to build is that how do you push inventory more effectively? So, uh, so I think uh, over various uh, kind of uh, categories, you will find that uh, mobile computing is, uh, is actually helping to uh, optimize inventory, push inventory, uh, free up time, so uh, uh, we are going to see more and more. We have reached an inflection point, I think, now. We are going to see uh, some real strong use cases coming uh, in various geographies. So. Right, okay. I think one, you know, just building upon. Sure. One interesting use case was uh, with mobile and the suppliers, you're essentially cutting the entire process of ordering. Yeah. So in the US, you get your detergent gets ordered, bases, you know, how fast it is getting used. And the best one was actually a diaper company. They keep track of how many diapers are actually used. And by the time you get to this thing, an auto uh, delivery happens to your home without you ordering. <laughs> now, you know, this is all context and location and thing, which is phenomenal. You don't even have to order, you don't have to go on a website and do things. Right, right. Now, in the Indian context, with the Indian regional navigation satellite system becoming fully operational in a couple of months, how do you see that changing the game? First of all, do you think that people are aware of the IRNSS and do you see the willingness in the industry to adopt IRNSS? From a location point of view, right? Most of the phones are either Android phones, some Windows phones and or, or Apple phones, right? Uh, they all have their own chipsets, whether it's, uh, you know, Broadcom, Qualcomm, Serve, CSR, you know, different mobile computing platforms. Um, and they in turn use GLONASS or GPS or Galileo or, you know, whatever. So, if the, the new system comes on board and if it gives you better degree of accuracy, which in this case it will, you know, it is a differential GPS and the accuracy levels will be on a different plane altogether. Um, and if the, you know, if it's easy to consume, I don't see any reason why, they, you know, the chipset companies won't add it. And um, my take is, you know, there's a whole Make in India program going on in India. And uh, this is the latest technological advancement that India has made. So eventually the chip companies will, will, will put it on or they'll be kind of forced to put it on. And uh, you know, that, that improves the quality of uh, information that you get in India. And you're not dependent on a third party satellite system. Sajid, I'm sure you can add on to that. Right, so I think uh, the motivations for launching our Indian kind of satellites is largely the fact that there are no dependencies on, on other such uh, systems. So, uh, in that sense, it's an it's a, it's a, it's a extremely good um, initiative by the Department of uh, Space. And uh, as uh, Shivalik said that, you know, more the better, you know, if, if it's in a, if the chip manufacturers are going to use it to enhance the accuracy or we can be dependent on, uh, you know, more options, it's good for the industry. So. The only thing I would add is, uh, again, I don't know a lot about, but I think there may be a correlation of this to more uh, sensitive and more uh, security things which are related to national security and things. And as and when more Internet of Things and smart cities kind of get into more uh, of the sensitive areas where you need to control information, you need to manage it much more closely, I think this gives that edge 
to uh, public sector and government departments and, and cities to manage some of the more sensitive and uh, secure areas which are more in control to, you know, if they don't want to share the data outside of the country or outside of their own network, uh, maybe this will boost up uh, this thing. So I agree, I think this will, the Make in India campaign and the, uh, all of these things kind of go, uh, to me it, it looks very, very intuitive that it goes together fairly well. Mm -hmm. I think it's safe to say that location intelligence and analytics is not just making our lives more efficient, but easier as well. Thank you.